All right, guys. Uh, <laughs> we've had a little bit of an issue going live here, but I'm finally here. Thanks for tuning in. This is absolutely insane, infuriating. It's so frustrating. So this is what we've got over here, don't we? So here's the Twitter feed. I'll adjust this just a little bit here. This is Minister Fraser's Twitter feed. We have a lovely picture with uh, the supporting minister, uh, sorry, the supporting MP, MP Sarai, who is connected in here, who was the, um, the sponsor or the person who initiated that initial private member's bill that we fom- fondly are, are aware of as M44. And look at this picture right here, okay? Do you see the picture? <laughs> the biggest issue that we have right now is that there is clearly a report that's been tabled. There's multiple pages. I can see it hanging on there. But what do we have here? Okay. You can see, kick kicked things off this session, which is what we knew he was going to do, by presenting the ways our government is looking to expand pathways to permanent residency for temporary foreign workers and international students. A special thanks to my colleague here, uh, MP Sarai, for bringing forth this important motion. Okay, well, the reality is this whole thing has been just so bizarre. That's all I can say. It has been so, so bizarre because... MP Sarai, it'd be one thing if the if the MP was, uh, say, opposition party leader or someone pushing forward, pushing the government to do something. Well, Minister Fraser had already done a bunch of things already on this. And I don't know if we can bring him on, but uh, boy, it'd be fun to have him in real life. Unfortunately, he probably uh, is, um, well, he's probably snoozing now. It's just about five o'clock Eastern time, 3.55 p.m. Mountain time. And so we're in this situation right now where we are still waiting. So we know that this motion 44, that he has tabled a report. So I'll let you guys in on a little secret. And the secret is simply this. Um, we, so we called, obviously, when we realized we searched through everywhere. I searched through all of the House of Commons. I tried to watch the, um, uh, the CPAC, which is basically the, uh, the video of what was transpiring in the House of Commons. And everybody can go here and they can see what was happening. So he indicated here that in the session, so we brought it forward. You can see here, kicked things off this session with the report. So I went in here and I was searching, trying to find where is this report? Where's the the actual video of him sharing it? And uh, well, I couldn't find it anywhere. Maybe you guys are smarter than I, because I want to know this stuff. I want to know what the heck is happening. And so um, so we know that it happened at the beginning. So I was searching through, let's flip back here, I was searching through everything and you can watch the, the actual house as it's going on. You can actually go in here and you can watch, um, watch the, the actual proceedings and uh, they have recordings of it and there was nothing. So what do we do? Well, because we're creative and uh, we're trying to figure out new ways of, uh, of, of tackling this issue, we went over here and we reached out to uh, uh, to MP Sarai's constituency office. And you guys, <laughs> you guys will never guess what response we got back, because obviously he's tagged in this too, when we called this constituency office. We said, hey, can we get a copy of the report that was tabled, that was tweeted by our minister, that your MP here is holding right here? Can we get a copy of it? And guess what they tell us? This is my personal favorite, you guys. Due to a technical glitch, it is not available. And I'm thinking, this is absolutely insane. So we've waited, and the minister, obviously, he did what he had to do. The very bare minimum was he re- he announced something. So now I'm just wondering. I'm going to zoom in on this so you guys can see it closely. Do you guys see this? This is the magical document right here. So my question is, right here. Is this just one, <laughs> one cover page and there's nothing behind here? Is it just one nice little cover page and nothing behind? Well, I having dealt with Minister Fraser in the past, Minister Fraser is a decent guy. And, um, and I, <laughs> yes, I'm telling you that minister, you're a decent guy, but the way in which the liberal government is rolling out these announcements by, you know, w- when it comes to immigration, I'm sorry. Like, you guys, this is just getting old. And I'm almost positive if we, st- if we started taking comments here now, and by all means, post your comments because, um, because I want to talk about this. 
But my goodness, why in the world? Why in the world? And Eli says, technical glitch. They never run out of excuses. Well, I'm with you. Like, why even bother tweeting this? Minister, why you? Why did you even bother tweeting this here? It's like, here, take a look at this. We've done it. We're so excited. It's awesome. But we are releasing absolutely no details. All right. Those of you who are waiting, it is just, yeah, it's just insane. You know, whether you're waiting over here in East Africa, great to have you connecting in. And we've got Ali who's tuning in here. We've got Mariana who's over in Toronto. She says, why am I not surprised to hear anything at all today? None of us really are surprised. Are we really surprised? And yes, Eli, we're all sitting here waiting. News, we're supposed to find out something. And I can tell you guys, I had no expectations, zero expectations that we were going to have any big uh, news bulletin or any news blast on the government website with a brand new program or anything like that. And I've talked about that for quite some time that this just isn't how the government operates. And when we go to the government site itself, your notices, you can see September the 13th was the last one notice on online refugee claims portal. Um, improves client service. Well, that's great. Uh, that's fantastic. But the reality is here, we still have Minister Fraser making announcements with Minister Sarai right here on their Twitter channels. Well, technically, this was retweeted, but technical glitches. Like seriously, seriously, if you're going to do this, don't leave us hanging. And I think it's only fair. And we have been constantly facing this, you guys, where they will announce something, big splash, and details will be forthcoming in the coming weeks. Remember the family sponsorship process for Ukraine nationals? What am I hearing? Well, if you guys could listen, it would be crickets going chirp, 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 nothing. Okay. And this program. So everybody is wondering what it's going to look like. And in fairness, you know, it does take time to create these programs. But um, yeah. So Jesse says, the day is not yet over. So let's wait patiently with lots of hope. Well, Jesse. Everything is shut down. It's 5 o'clock Eastern time. It is 5 p.m. in Ottawa. And very rarely do I ever see anything that is released after 5 p.m. Now, it's possible. It's possible that maybe something absolutely um, pops up, but I'm with Satinder here. This is ridiculous. They're losing lots of credibility. As an RCIC, I've been assuring that they will announce something, but this is simply incompetence. Well, there's something at play here. And the, the Liberal government has repeatedly, repeatedly been, been um, emphasizing the need for government transparency, open government. And that's all fine and dandy. But when we get tweets like this, it's just not helpful. So like I said, we actually called um, MP Sarai's office, his constituency office, because obviously, you know, the, the, minister's, uh, the minister's office in Ottawa is closed. Um, usually it shuts down about 4 or 4.30, right? And so the, the, to not have the report at least available is just, it's shocking. And what report am I talking about if you guys have tuned in late? So we have here this statement from Minister Fraser that says they kicked off the session by presenting the ways our government is looking to expand pathways to permanent residency for who? Temporary foreign workers and international students. So there's a little bit of a tantalizing teaser there, which really isn't very tantalizing because we've already talked about this, right? We've already had this discussion over and over. We know what it's supposed to be because uh, Motion 44 um, was well documented as to what, um, uh, if I search up M44, and we've already gone through this as well in past videos, but um, this, this bill, Motion 44 right here, already breaks down what the minister is supposed to do. He's supposed to address all these things. And if you want to watch it, just watch my um, TR to PR, new TR to PR pathway. Watch that video and I talk about this in detail and show you everything. So, Yes, he did follow through. Yes, it was September 20th. But at the end of the day, this is all we've got to show for it is a picture of them standing right here in Ottawa with this nice little front page of a document that is mysteriously unavailable because MP Sarai's office says that it was a technical glitch. So uh, Kevin says probably coming out around November. Well, I don't care on, in all honesty, like he's given a little bit of a lifeline with these 18 month postgrad work permits. But for, for all intents and purposes, like just release some details about it. If you created it, how hard is it? And what kind of a technical glitch? Like they're holding it. 
So anyways, um, <laughs> this is what we're dealing with, right, you guys? And uh, 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 Spider-Man, as always, good to see you over there um, tuning in from La Chute. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. So what are your thoughts? Like realistically, you guys, like what do you think about this? Um, what can we glean from the very, very little information that has been shared? Well, we know that there is some type of a plan that is probably going to be more than just an adjustment of express entry. Um, the way I look at this image and I try to, you know, examine it and try to glean things off of it, um, I have to assume that there, and I see construction workers on there, I see other people, uh, I see desk jobs, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm squinting to try to figure something out and digest it. But ultimately, um, it's highly expected that there's going to be something for people that are NOC C's and D's. We know that it's going to roll out, um, uh, you know, the tier system in November. But ultimately, the program, I can't see the program being launched like within weeks. It's not. But we just want to know details of what they're intending to do. And sadly, you guys, even if we get those details, it's still not going to meaningfully move the needle any in terms of uh, people trying to plan their affairs or plan their life. And so, uh, so Tinder once again hits on the reality that it's over committing and under delivering. And this seems, he says, this tweet seem like an information of what is to come, but not available. Has that sounded familiar? Yes. Seems like trying to deal with optics so they don't look too bad. Well, this is the problem, right? You know, if I tell a client, hey, client, yes, retain me. Uh, give me, you know, X number of dollars to help you with your express entry application. And then as soon as you pay me, I just sit in my office and I don't do anything. And I say, oh, yes, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. And then the person's ITA expires, right? Because I, I didn't act on it and I sat and did nothing. Like that's kind of how it feels like if I was to put myself in the, the shoes of clients. And so, you know, it, I was ready to, to announce everything. And um, Jenny, I was so hopeful to actually provide meaningful updates. But this is all I got for you guys. This is all I have is a tweet, right, with a picture alluding to it. Even when I go to the to the House of Commons and I try searching, and like I said, you can go um, you can go through here and uh, and you can actually watch what's going on. You can see what's going on in the House sitting calendar. You can pull it up, and we looked at this before to see that uh, for for today, this was the earliest opportunity. They started the fifteenth, sixteenth. But today, the 20th is when this was all tabled. We also, we also talked about the actual um, fact that this is supported by all of, the, um, all of the, the parties and all of the members. And if you see here, and you can click on vote details here, you can see that there wasn't a single MP in all of Ottawa that voted on this that, um, that didn't support it. 324 yeas, zero nays, okay? So... Everybody was waiting for this. Everybody knows it's important, but to, to not have something meaningful is just, it's crazy. And it's so disappointing. Um, okay, so Muhammad says, technical glitch. It's a hard copy of a document. It's literally pathetic. Okay, well, I don't want to be too harsh because I never know the full situation. In my meetings with Minister Fraser earlier this year, I could see that this is an individual that genuinely wanted to try to do things right. But wow, this portfolio, it burns people up. We had Minister Hussein, we had Minister Medicino, now we have Minister Fraser, because it just wears you to the, to the bone. You guys know how much stress you go through as applicants and people seeking to stay, remain in Canada, apply to come to Canada. You know how much, those of you consultants out there and immigration lawyers, you know how much stress we've been on under over the last little while because, you know, because of all of this complete gong show. Like, I'm really, really disappointed in this. And um, once again, why tweet, Minister? Why even post the tweet, you know, if you don't have anything to share? And you can see all these hearts building up. Let me slide over here and I'll show you. So why post the tweet if you don't have anything to share? And you can watch the hearts actually rolling over here with people. There's 510 like it. Well, that's all great. But, you know, when I go to Minister Fraser's actual post here, um, Lots of comments, but <laughs> there's my comment. Details would be helpful, my friends. So <laughs> there you go. Oh, what do you say? So we know that probably there's going to be some form of a new program because otherwise it wouldn't have taken so many steps to actually create this fancy document. 
Uh, so we'll have to wait. We'll have to watch. We'll have to see. All right, let's see what else you guys have to say. I'm just about getting ready for my uh, for my live Express Entry Masterclass that's just starting in about uh, 50 minutes. And actually, there is a little bit of time still left for you guys if you're interested in connecting in and um, and subscribing and joining me in the Express Entry one. If some of you have got ITAs and you're just curious about this stuff, that actual masterclass for, uh, that I have for the Express Entry course is going and the cart is still open. Um, we're still taking uh, people in, but this will be the last today uh, because we had our first session yesterday and it's going to be transitioning um, to uh, a closed cart here very shortly with my Express Entry course right here. So those of you, there's a link in the description below if you're still interested in jumping in. But this is all about the TR to PR pathway this new one, which, you know, it is going to be, as we can see here, for temporary residents, workers, and international students. So that means people in Canada. Okay, let's see what else you guys have to say. Vignesh says, even if he comes out with some announcement, for sure it's going to be vague with no defined timelines. It will all be like in the coming weeks, days ahead. I'll give you one of these, my friend. Let's see if I can crank up my sound effects. Oh, the clapping didn't happen fast enough. So here we go. I'll give you some applause. <laughs> That's a great tweet. Okay, let's see. Um, Manzur says, I think that the booklet they're holding is all we need to know. True, yes. Um, <laughs> Lori says, Canada doesn't need people, new immigrants. Government don't respect anyone. Well, I can tell you, and from my, um, from my live that I did yesterday, Canada actually does need you guys. And if we look at the unemployment rates, they've been lower than they've been in, in decades. And as I've indicated, and I just did an immigration, um, a little immigration talk uh, for one of the um, software providers that services uh, immigration representatives, um, Officio, I did one today. And one of the things I talked about is that, you know, things are heating up for the economy. And those of you who are outside of Canada looking to come in, we've always talked about the importance of job offers. Well, those job offers are going to start to come and uh, genuine ones, legitimate ones. I, I'm gonna release, I don't know if my little short on YouTube was released, but when it comes to those job offers, there's lots of fake people out there trying to scam you, but legitimate LMIA supported job offers that give additional points, those are going to be more, much more available than they ever have in the past because of shortages. So stay tuned and I'll talk a lot more about that. I'm actually in, um, in discussions with a, uh, a reputable recruiting company that I really have a lot of respect for. Um, now, I had one company tell me that they were short 5,000 workers. Can you imagine that? And so this is the world. This is the direction we're going to be going. So work experience in Canada and the avail availability of, uh, of job offers and things like that are going to be coming. So, all right, let's see. Zia says, uh, maybe same as the TRPR last year, they announced it. Uh, three, um, I think three weeks before the pathway opened. Yeah, that was kind of crazy, wasn't it? And uh, those who uh, attended the, who subscribed to my tier to PR pathway course, I was completely connected in at that time and knew exactly what was going to happen and was able to share it. Um, this is a different beast, isn't it, you guys? This is a different beast. Okay, so Tinder says he's got two clients who are counting on this announcement. Both clients have work permits expiring in January. These delays have real life consequences. You're absolutely right, Satinder. And boy, I could tell you how many clients I have, uh, like right now, that have come through my office that I've been connecting with and trying to support. I don't know, 50, 60, maybe just in this situation alone. And let's face it, everybody, the ramifications of what happens with this right here is going to have ripple effects for everything. So it's not just the TR to PR pathway or whatever program that the minister decides to roll out. It will have ripple effects to the express entry process. It will have ripple effects to um, how the government decides to issue study permits and the numbers of them um, and even the issuance of work permits. So all of this plays into the long-term planning of, uh, of immigration and all of your futures. So if you're not watching this, well, boy, you, you better be. Because what happens here will dictate what's happening in the future. Yes, Tachuku, uh, taken too long. Absolutely, it has. Um, uh, okay, Sharma says, is this going to be for people who are out of status? Any ideas? This is where I'm going to ring my bell. And I'm going to say, slide over to our website and actually book a consultation. Because if you're out of status right now, you know, and you're not uh, captured by the post-grad work permit, this new 18-month post-grad work permit, then you need to deal with it as soon as possible and not wait. You can't rely upon these programs um, to be able to save you. The reality is it's just, 
like the, the, the odds of them being able to fix it, like the 18 month postgrad work permit did for those who were out of status, the odds of that continuing to help people who are out of status is just, it's just non-existent. It's just not going to happen. Um, one thing I want to let you guys know is that on our site, um, when it comes to the consultations, because of the, pa you know, the pandemic, because of the inflation, everything that's happening, I want to show you guys something here. If you click on speak to a lawyer, we, I haven't really been advertising this, but as a firm, we've decided to reduce our rates, um, uh, down. And so you can see for me, I've dropped a hundred dollars off my consult rate just for September going forward. Um, uh, so from today till the end of September, I've dropped my consult rate down a hundred dollars and, uh, all of us within our firm are, are trying to do what we can to, to just ease the burden. I know some of you haven't even been able to work and it's only recently in the announcement by the, the minister with the post-grad work permit changes that you've been able to go back to work and it's tough. And to try to find answers and direction and guidance that you can trust is just not as accessible as it used to be. So why are no details being released? The new TR to PR pathway 2022? Well, this is a question only these individuals here can answer, MP Sarai and, and the minister. And like I said, and those of you who are tuning in a little bit later, who are just joining me later, um, we actually called Minister Sarai's office um, and I'll just open up right here. We called Minister Sarai's office and they said that they the document wasn't available to be released because of a technical glitch, which I have no clue what that means. What is a technical glitch? I don't know. All right, so that's what we're dealing with. Okay, let's see what else we've got comments. What are your thoughts? What do you guys think about this? Um, uh, let's keep zipping through here. Um, okay, Ravi, you've got a little bit of a different question. Got an invitation to apply for OINP master's graduate stream. Should I go for it and apply? Yeah, every single option that you guys have, do it, pursue it. Okay, let's see. Mex over here tuning in from Facebook, the Canadian Immigration Institute Facebook page. They're probably trying to fix the system before launching any program because it has been issues lately. Oh boy, you guys, this is something that has been absolutely one of the biggest pain points um, that the, the government has, 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 has been just perpetuating and it's the online filing. I'm just gonna pull this up here. Um, I want to pull this up and I want to show you guys this darn announcement. You know, this is something I just don't, I don't understand. I really don't. Um, uh, I, yeah, I just don't understand this. Um, okay, let's show it here. Okay, you brought it up, so let's talk about it. So you can see here, transitioning to online applications for PR. So you can see as of September the 23rd, we're talking Friday, you guys. All PNPs, these are not express entry. Well, because express entry is already online. Quebec skilled workers, sponsorships of spouses, dependent children, eligible relatives, orphans, siblings, and Alicia in my office does a lot of um, applications for um, for overseas adoptions. But uh, you know, adopting a child, rural northern immigration pilot. So this here you can see has has now it's pushing all of this through to online filing. They're trying to roll it out. So we got some more of the Quebec programs October seventh, agri food and startup and TRP holders, October 14th. Home support, childcare, H&C applications are going online October 21st. Oh my goodness, those applications are so, so labor and, and, and paper-based, so document intensive to, to have, and then they're probably gonna try to wedge it in. Those of you who are watching this and you're actually in the mix, like right into the mix, you know, we're getting requests for additional information on many express entry applications and what is happening well, they give one spot for four megabytes to upload. I've, I've seen it for one of my clients. They only uploaded, they only gave one spot to upload all of the documents for basically an entire spousal application, which is often what happens when you're adding a spouse, <coughs> excuse me, adding a spouse to your EAPR um, while you're waiting for it to be processed, which was a lot of people. So all of these things, you guys, it's just, it's just, it's crazy. Okay, let's see what else we have here. I love your comments, you guys. I love them. Um, okay, uh, Tochu says, can I try express entry, express entry now that I am in Canada, not CEC? Well, you can always pursue, pursue federal skilled worker regardless of where you're at, um, my friend. Okay, um, Parth said, did IRCC start emailing after um, opting out from first round about how to change an address under automatic work permit measures? Another example, Parth. 
We have not seen a lot of movement on that. If anyone has seen those emails, let me know for round two because there's still silence. Okay, um, Natish says, well then when will we get the information? Once again, the only person that can answer that is this fine fellow right here. So maybe tomorrow, maybe this technical glitch that was alluded to by MP Sarai's office here. And I'll flip back here. It's kind of fun flipping around here by, by MP um, Randeep S. Sarai. Well, his staff said it was a technical glitch and that's why we couldn't, um, that's why we couldn't get it. And as I follow through and I'm watching my channel here, I'm watching my internal teams. Uh, my staff have been looking to see if anything is going to be announced. I'm not expecting anything today. You know, so this technical glitch must be pretty massive. It must be super, super massive to not be able to release a paper document, but it is what it is. Okay. Kay, you're not alone running out of patience. I hear you. Um, uh, LCM says, is that even a document or just a pamphlet, LOL? Well, that's what we were looking at, right? We were looking at this saying, okay, how thick is this? I see, I see a little bit of a page down here, right here. So we can zoom in up a little bit. Like there's, it looks like there's maybe a few pages right there. That's pretty sad, right? When we're like some kind of uh, private investigators who were re reviewing surveillance film from the office of uh, of the MP to try to determine, um, yeah, whether or not this is actually a fulsome document or whether it's just a cover page with nothing else behind it. So, wow, the things that uh, that immigration makes us do, right? Okay, let's see what else. Um, okay, DG says, how do you think about the CLB level for this year? Well, it's always going to be high, guys. So as far as I'm concerned, you want to maximize your score to the greatest extent possible. CLB 9 at a very bare minimum is what I would always be shooting for. We know that with the Canadian Experience class, it offers some of the lowest in conjunction with some PNPs uh, language levels. And uh, 5 is the CLB level for, um, for knock Bs for CEC and for some other programs. So, um, yes, <laughs> slide cow says the clapping didn't happen fast enough. Neither did motion 44's policy. That is 100% correct. Okay. Um, Malav says, will there be a course for the new TR to PR program? 100% there will. And, uh, we don't have it like on right now. You'll, you'll find it right here on the Canadian Immigration Institute, and I'll have a post for it. Um, but the thing was, when I did that course for the TR to PR pathway, and the post-grad course is still alive, you guys. It is open and available for you. But um, that whatever new program that they launch, I will absolutely have it here. And you can see it's not listed the TR to PR pathway anymore. But those of you who went in, I can show you if I go into my library here. Um, I've got a bunch of courses here. And this critter, let's see if we can even find the TR to PR pathway. It seems like an eternity ago. Ukraine, postgrad extension. Let's see if it's even alive. Maybe I don't even have it anymore. I don't. It's not even, it's not even alive anymore. <laughs> but that program, that course, um, it was so much fun. You know, we had probably about four or 500 people that went through that course all in this condensed period of time. It was rough and tumble. We had, you know, live sessions every evening to answer questions as the information was dripped out. And that's the exact same thing that we will do with this program. Now, one thing that I do not believe you guys is going to happen is that immigration is going to put a cap on this. We're only going to take this many people. That's the challenge that happened with the international graduate stream when there was only so many spots available and way more people than could actually fill those 40,000 spots or whatever it ultimately ended out to be, 48,000. And so that race to file was really painful. And the people who came in and took the course, um, they were prepared. We were well prepared, weren't we? So many of them are all permanent residents now and got it within the first, you know, some of them got it within a couple weeks after they had, uh, when they started processing after that program was announced. But it's all about learning together, sharing the information freely and helping one another. I do not pretend to know everything there is to know about every immigration program. I don't, that's impossible, but I sure try to. And the things that I learn from you, I then share with everybody else and vice versa. I teach all of my clients. I teach all of my students everything that I know. And then they, I know, go share with the world too. So if I can have that much of an influence on the world, then I am one happy immigration lawyer. Okay, um, let's see what else is next here. Um, okay, Zia says, let us wait. They will surprise us. Well, we shall see. Um, 
Jenny says, I'm looking forward to attending the TRPR class when it is launched. Absolutely, Jenny. It's going to be awesome. And it always is because of you guys. These live streams are the way they are because of you guys. Okay. Um, is there going to be any pause on draws because of the knock change? That's a fantastic question, Labib. Because when we look at the fact that November, that's what they've stated, they're going to roll over to tier, they have to make changes internally within Express Entry. And right now, there is a ton of things that they've got going on on the other side of that portal. It has been an absolute disaster lately. And as they're quickly ramping up to try to make room and to try to meet this deadline for when they, um, when they launch all of these programs, like I've showed here, you know, as of Friday, all of this has to go online. And I can tell you that I have been advising my in-Canada applicants to file by a paper for a very, very long time for sponsorship from within Canada because I want them to be able to maintain their work status by including a work permit with it. But that's going to all disappear as of Friday. And the sad part for me, you guys, is that now I have to go back in and revise my spousal sponsorship course. This one is one that was launched um, in, in the last one was August the 15th. But I have to go in and revise this now to remove all the paper-based lessons and to update everything to make sure people know that there is only one way. So I've got a little bit of work to do that, uh, work before I do that. And if you go to the Canadian Immigration Institute page, uh, which is in the link below, you'll be able to see all the courses and the next spousal sponsorship starts October the 17th. So uh, yeah, so check that out. But I've got some work to do now uh, to, to update and revise that. So um, yes, so is there going to be a pause? Well, I don't think there's going to be a pause in draws. I think they're going to continue on because uh, ultimately they have very, very lofty goals. And it's interesting, guys, because one of the things that I did, even when I was, and I always do this, right? I look at every source of information I can, and I would hope that other places do too. So when I hadn't heard anything about this, I thought, well, surely, okay, when I was with the CBA, there was no chance that anyone was going to learn anything faster than I did about the programs. But I learned very quickly that, um, that these fine fellows over here, as you can see them, have a pretty good connection. And what is their connection? Well, they have actual people that are writing these articles that this is all that they do. They are paid full time to produce these articles. So I went here to see if Shelby had any updates on Minister, Fra uh, Minister Fraser's announcement um, because like they've indicated here in their little article, um, there is uh, there was an expectation we'd actually have some information today. So even CIC News can't add anything to this. So um, Jose, hang in there. So I know this is something we just have to be. It's staying power. It's stamina. It's just being relentless and not giving up. You've come so far, you guys. So hang in there. He says he's lost all positive expectations, but hang in there. So we know there's something there. We know it's moving. It's just the details we don't have. Um, okay, let's see here. We're going to keep zipping through. And remember, uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, I will have my traditional immigration live Q&A. Uh, but, uh, but for now, we're just kind of focusing on this announcement. And uh, this is basically the topic right here, you guys. So what details, you know, why the details are not being released, this new TR to PR pathway. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear your comments. Let's keep zipping through here and see what else we have. Um, Let's see here. We've got a bunch of questions that are specific, but uh, we're going to get to those. If you want to join tomorrow, 10 a.m., that's when I have my live Q&A. Uh, let's see if we've got any other comments here. It looks like we've got a lot of people posting regular questions. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Sincerely Moni says, as a previous member of Mark's TR to PR course, I really get the frustration. Even down to the end, they were making changes and adding new requirements. It's stressful, but worth it. Mark was a big help. Well, that's what we did, right, uh, Moni? We, we literally were updating things all the way up to the very day before when they officially released everything. I had attended that technical briefing, right? And, you know, the interesting thing too, Moni, is that I tried to share as much as I possibly could, you know, freely on the site. And so... Uh, when we went through that process, um, you know, those who, who subscribed were able to get the sample documents and the templates and, and live asking me questions about their own applications and clarifying things. Um, that's one of the best parts of the course. And everybody who subscribes, everybody that's in that group is just like a, a tight knit family. And, um, and the reason I charge for it is because it's my time. And this stuff, I know I'm amplifying it to the world. So it's super beneficial. 
But when I take that time away from my regular client work to do those courses, I don't offer them free. I do charge. But the difference is you get the full benefit of everything that I learn, everything I know, everything I can share. And you kind of crowdsource the cost of it because the cost of doing it is far cheaper than just hiring directly. Now, with that being said, within the firm, obviously, we help anyone who's looking for a little bit of help and um, and wants direction and, full, you know, support, legal support. So, OK, let's see here. Um, Let's see what's next here. Um, Kay says, is there even any PR pathway for people with CRS between 460 and 475? CEC Ontario, very disappointing because depending on this announcement, work permit expiring on March, hang in there, Kay. Okay, so although Minister Fraser and Mr. Shirai really didn't have much to share other than this lovely little photo op, like I said, once again, I feel like I'm looking down from a, you know, from a surveillance camera trying to assess what in the world could be contained in this little document here. But uh, I guess that's what we're relegated to, isn't it, you guys? Okay, let's see here. Um, uh, okay, all right. So another Facebook, Perzo says, Dear Mike Holthy, so Mark is my name, but that's okay. I answered a lot of things. Um, I had a consult with a reputable Canadian immigration law firm about express entry through FSWP and with an email of regret was advised to take the international student pathway. Could you please let me know if the FSWP will reopen during 2022? I'm a doctor of medicine and a public health specialist from Pakistan. So Perzo, one thing I'd, I'd like to share with you is the simple fact that the Federal Skilled Worker Program is open and has been open since July. They're doing no program specified draws, which means that it's open season to anyone, no matter which economic program you qualify for, um, you're, you have an opportunity to get an invitation to apply. But what that firm should have explained to you is that the, it's so competitive that unless you have some Canadian experience, you know, work experience in most cases, or French or something like that, it's very unlikely you're gonna qualify. Excuse me, but I do EAPR um, application. Like I help clients with express entry all the time that are outside of Canada. We we go through all their documents, and they have received ITAs, and they have French or other th- other um, abilities that are giving them that boost to stay over 500. And what are we sitting at? Like 510, right? Okay. So yes, there is. Um, it's 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 going. The question is, what impact? this report is going to have on express entry is this report going to result in a new stream and think of it this way you guys if there is a new stream that's created it will divert some of the people that are competing in the regular draws away to other programs and if there are fewer people in the pool fewer with canadian work experience because they're going through a different pathway then by its very nature, it's going to cause the CRS scores to drop uh, for federal skilled worker. So, um, so that's one potential positive. All right, let's keep going through here. Um, okay, Laura says, the worst about all the delays is that there are more international students, temporary workers than spots for PR, all programs combined. You're right, Laura. There absolutely is. And the minister, um, you know, and, and, and the, the cabinet who decide how the levels planning each year, they're acutely aware of this. Um, and you can see there was a time when many, many people used the study permit pathway as a way to, to go through express entry and get the points. And that's kind of what was driving the ship. And now there's so many people, the refusal rates are a lot higher. We are working tooth and nail with countless people who've had refusals to, to explore other avenues, judicial reviews, trying to request reconsideration. Cedric had a reconsideration approved just the other day that I didn't think he had a prayer of getting reconsidered, but it was because there were clear errors in those decisions and IRCC does make mistakes. And that's why when you consult with an immigration lawyer, one of the avenues we have available to us is leave applications for judicial review to challenge those decisions. And, uh, and so those, you know, it's just one more tool in our tool block, toolbox, right? Um, okay, let's keep zipping through here. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, Laura says, so they have thousands waiting, but not everyone will benefit, so nobody can actually plan. You're, you're 100% correct. Yes. Um, okay, Akish says, I'm expecting separate draws for CEC and more points for CEC, nothing else, a new pathway. Well... We'll have to see, because when I look at this, do you think that they would have produced this document, this alleged document here, if they were not intending to create some other form of new program? 
And remember, when we look at the actual, um, if we go to motion 44, let's see if we can find motion 44. can't remember if I actually have it here. Uh, let's go back to motion 44. Okay, so if you go back to motion 44 itself, what Minister Sarai, uh, keep calling him Minister MP Sarai, um, uh, says uh, what they proposed here, you can see, is that they look at um, giving more weight to significant in-Canada work experience and expand the eligible occupational categories and work experience at various skill levels. So that's one of the things that, you know, Express Entry, um, it's not designed at this stage to account for C's and D's skill levels. And so I'm hoping that's something that's going to happen. Um, Okay, let's keep zipping in. We're just going to stay on this topic, guys. Um, okay, uh, Nastaran says, how does it include international students who are currently studying in Canada and haven't finished their studies yet? I believe that the pathways, I, I can't personally see a pathway where an international student doesn't have some work experience. So the tr to pr pathway was kind of this one-time uh, grant that the, that the minister did to allow more people to be able to go through... Um, uh, permanent resident pathways when their skill was at a low skill because they were essential workers and were literally putting their life on the line for all of the Canadians who were all cowering in their homes because of the pandemic. Well, all those foreign workers who were out there on the front lines, the essential workers kept the country rolling. And so that tier to peer pathway was a benefit to them. And international students, well, they had not been able to meet their levels plans. So they extended it to international graduates um, because of the, you know, basically to, to acknowledge the fact that, uh, um, that they are the, the easiest pathway to completing and, and filling up our levels plans when we couldn't bring people from outside because of the travel restrictions. So very interesting. Okay, uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, <laughs> Armin says, one clause in it, give PR to everyone. <laughs> That's a loud round of applause. Okay, um, let's see here. Okay, Akish says, it's been released. Please see. Okay, so I want you guys to post it. So if you guys see that it's been released, then where is it? I want to see. Released the PDF. Where is it? Where's the link? I see uh, they released the PDF mark. Okay, so where is it? That's exactly what I was hoping, that we could kind of do a watch party. Mark, here's the document. Okay, slide cow. Oh, you guys are killing me. Okay, so let's see. Was it the minister? Was it IRCC? Let's see. You guys are killing me. Can, are any of you guys, can you put the URL in there? I'm just trying to locate it myself right now. Let me go back. Okay, this is exactly what I was hoping, that if we talked about it enough, we would get some motion. So let's see here. Give me a second. I'm going to go back to our page here and see if I can pull it up. Um, post the, oh, there it is. Okay. So let's, let's see if we can get this one. Okay, guys, uh, just give me one second. I'm going to pull it up and we're going to look at it together. We are going to look at this together. Okay. Where is it? I just saw it. I just saw it. Who posted that? Was it a YouTuber or a Facebooker? <laughs> it was a Facebook. <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh my goodness. This is so funny. This is really funny. Okay, so um, let's see. I don't want to have to type that in manually. That would be a pain. So refugees, corporate publications, manuals, motion 44 response. Okay, so let's see if we can get this. And if you guys on YouTube, um, oh, it's okay. That's why you can't post it on YouTube. That's okay. We're going to figure this out, you guys. I'm going to pull it up. Thank you so much. Hang tight. Oh, it's coming, guys. It is coming. This is great. Hot off the press. Let's see here. Facebook lets me in. <laughs> okay, let's go to our group. And it looks like uh, it's the Canadian Immigration Institute page. So I'm going to slide over there. Canadian Immigration Institute. And let's see if we can find the video. Facebook doesn't cooperate with me uh, too great. So I have to find where my live stream is being broadcast. And then search down. So just give me a second. Well, theoretically, unless they blocked it. Okay, okay. Now we're we're just about here. Now we're making some forward uh, forward movement movement here. Okay. All right. Let's see. This seems to be what we've got here. So this appears to be the document. So let's expand this <clears throat> strategy to expand transition to permanent residence. Uh, there's a PDF version right here. 
executive summary. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Let's see, is there part one? Okay, uses the increased immigration levels, okay, to provide Canada with larger permanent uh, labor supply. Okay, increases the opportunity for more temporary workers. Uh, pillar two aims to reform the express entry system, which we knew, right? So let's get this a little bit easier so you guys can see it. So pillar two, we knew that the minister has the authority now to do targeted draws and things like that. Increasing flexibility under express entry through the recent changes, which we've talked about to IRPA. Um, they'll allow the minister to respond to labor, which means knock specific draws. Um, regional economic priorities so that he can consult with the provinces and say, what do you need? Are you short? You know, this, you know, what occupations are you short? And let's face it, you guys, the, 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 um, <clears throat> when you, when you think about the provinces, they're the ones that are in the game of, uh, of knock specific stuff. And then you can see here, um, they can increase Francophone immigration. So what should you be learning? What should you be studying right now? French. And so they can select more with those specific attributes and such as in Canada experience. What does that mean? That means international students potentially increasing points for uh, for language. It could be, uh, sorry, uh, for education. It could be increasing points for work experience in Canada. So the minister has the ability to adjust the scores to be able to, um, to alter that. And you can see the department will also review the comprehensive ranking system, like I said, particularly, okay, I just said this, points awarded for, here it is, experience, education, language, and job offers. And in consultation with key partners, I'd like to know who those key partners are. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm here and available to help you guys. So key partners, he says, um, if we jump down here, he says the minister will be better placed to ensure the labor market needs of industries and employers. So who are those key partners? They're, they're employers, they're industries that are, that are really suffering from shortages, okay? All right, and uh, I see we've got here, Bassam says nothing new. Well, you're actually wrong. So let's keep going through here, you guys. <laughs> Bassam says all this weight is for nothing. You have to read between the lines. So let's keep going here and see what else it says. So um, making improvements to permanent economic immigration to help transition from TR to PR. Do you see this? Of essential workers in high demand occupations. So this is where let's get right into it. Let's take a look at this. So those who say there's nothing here and Basim who says we're waiting for nothing. Well, that is simply not true, my friend. And the reality is because they give hints as to occupations that are actually going to be of interest to them. So let's see here. So they're going to adopt the latest version. That's tier, okay? And it'll expand. Some people who are right now not eligible right now, we knew that, will be eligible for express entry, improve access um, for qualifications and connecting them to programs, blah, blah. We don't care about that, really. Exploring what, better ways to transition workers uh, who are in high demand, uh, such as removing barriers for physicians, okay? So ding, ding, ding. That is one and I don't know what sound effect to use for that, um, but the reality is physicians and then introducing improvements to pilot programs to support uh, the transition of who? In-home caregivers as well as agri-food sector. So these right here you can see are key industries that they're looking at, healthcare, which we've, which we've seen. And so, okay, here, uh, aim to support communities in attracting and retaining newcomers. Okay, so we know that the, some of the PNPs and other programs, they're the rural and northern immigration pilot. They're maintaining 4.4%. So this is stuff that has been said in the past. And then pillar five, to increase processing capacity, improving client experience. Okay, so all of this here is stuff that they've been working on to modernize the immigration system, which obviously rolling over to online filing is uh, is something that they're doing right now. And um, they will complement, you can see, the existing provincial and territorial tools that allow them to independently select. So the impact on the PNPs is going to be only so insofar as the candidates that the federal government is going to be pulling um, are likely going to be some of the ones that the provinces are pulling right now, okay? So when you go through this, you can see as far as these pillars go, yes, yes, I will confirm that there have been um, like a, a lot of regurgitation of what they're already doing, but the very motion itself that um, uh, that that the MP put forward here, motion 44, was very clear, clearly setting out what they were supposed to do. So the question becomes as we go through this, and if I pull up the PDF, let's see if there's anything different. So here's the actual PDF. Nice pictures, 
I wonder how much they paid to design these nice images on here. Um, this report right here is broken down into the pillars, uh, context and the role of immigration. And then, so there's a whole bunch more here. And you can see this report. We have only even touched on it. So 399 pages um, that supports it. What we reviewed here was the executive summary. So what we went through here is just the executive summary. And then this is the actual document here. So I've got a few more, uh, I've got a few more minutes before I have to jump on my live stream. So let's take a look at this sucker and let's see if there's anything more we can see in here. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you guys, all right? What do you wanna review first? So <clears throat> if we go through here, I know you guys are probably digesting it, but what do you wanna cover first? So you can see temporary foreign workers, skill level composition of temporary foreign workers. This is context and role of immigration. Here's the strategy. We have the, the leveraging increased immigration levels. So they're increasing that reform to express area and increase flexibility. So we know that the minister will go through with that. He will um, look at making changes that strategically target um, certain occupations. Um, and so we know that that's going to come. We know that the new knock is going to be released. They've got a breakdown of the tier, which we've done a lot of videos on our website. If you slide over here, go to resources and then click on blog here. And you just, you can even type in tier. We have a breakdown um, that Chanel and Cedric did to immigration lawyers in our firm uh, that talks about the eligibility um, for tier and the winners and losers and all that kind of thing in our actual blog post. You guys have to go and check that out. Okay, let's zip back here and let's keep, digesting what we have here. So you can see occupations to become eligible under express entry. So these are ones that just weren't before, but this is a lot of stuff to, to a large extent. This is still new. Let's um, let's just jump back for a second here and let's go back to the beginning. Let's see if there's anything else that we can digest by title. And um, so let's see, temporary residence transition. So pillars, reform, enhanced programs, uh, knock, Foreign qualification recognition, enhancements to agri-food, physicians, caregivers, supporting transition of international students. Ah, okay. Well, let's, I don't know if there's anything special in there. Um, okay, so this is, yeah, this is reiterating what they've already done, which is basically allowing people who've studied from March 20, 2020 outside of Canada until August 2020, you can now count that towards express entry, which is, uh, <clears throat> which is, which they've already announced here. And so in many respects, they're basically consolidating everything that, uh, you know, everything that comes um, uh, related to students. Um, so, and then you can see here, finally, a key commitment in minister's mandate letter is the creation of a clear pathway to permanent residence for international students. Okay. They recently tested new approaches by implementing measures that gave certain international grads, and let's blow this up here. Okay. More time to stay in Canada and continue gaining work experience. Okay, so that's the postgrad, um, 18 month postgrad extension. And they're gonna assess the impact of these measures and incorporate the lessons and insights into the policy review of the international student program. So the department, here's another key issue here. The department is exploring options, and let's see if we can enlarge this just a little bit more, ex exploring options for additional pathways to PR for international student graduates particularly if their education, training, or work experience is relevant in helping address Canada's emerging economic priorities. So once again, you can see that they are placing a heavy, heavy emphasis on certain industries and occupations. And so as we're going through all of this, you guys, it's really important to watch and see where areas of shortage are. And if you are outside Canada and you're planning on coming to Canada and going to school, well, pay attention to where the labor market is. Look at the long-term projections. Look to see where there's going to be labor shortages, not just you know in the world generally, but specifically in Canada. And if you come to study in Canada, attend and take programs that are going to lead to occupations in these areas that are, are going to be shortage. And I think that's a good topic for a video, isn't it? So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to talk about this kind of stuff, okay? So the government intends to work with provinces, territories, stakeholders, and how to improve the program based on selection, recruitment, and retention. So what does this mean? It means probably a pilot, just like the Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program, which now becomes a full program. I suspect there will be a separate program for international students. They've said it right here. So let's see, you know, how long will it take, Kanjin says, for them to actually implement this? Well, we will see, all right? 
Let me just go back here and I know I've been talking a lot. So you can see here that they say right here um, about the pathway to permanent residency. And they also say that they are going to explore options for additional pathways, including right here for international targeting international student graduates. And I can't see a world where it's just going to be you graduate and you get PR. It's going to be people who, and you can see here particularly, uh, if their education training or work experience is relevant and helping address Canada's emerging economic priorities. So what do I need to do a video on? I need to do a video on Canada's emerging economic priorities. That's what I need to focus in. Okay. Um, yes. And then communities to help them attract. Let's see if there's anything else here within the headlines. Francophone immigration, we know, is obviously a priority for this government. Uh, building operational capacity. Yeah, you got to figure out the fact that your programs and processing and online systems, you're, you're just, it's a disaster. And yes, you've sunk millions of dollars into it. So we know that conclusion. Okay, so, so this is, um, to a large extent, there's a lot of information in here has already been released that we've already, you know, suspected. There have been some confirmations that we've been able to see here. Um, international students, if we touch on this, you can see as of 2021, there were over 618,000 of you guys. <coughs> and that, you can see, this is the end of 2021. How many went through the TR to PR pathway? Well, you guys, there was at least 40, whatever, thousand that were probably processed as fast as virtually anything else because they were all submitted in that first day. So, um, so you know, 40,000 of those are were permanent residents already. So, yeah, held valid study permits. Just crazy, the number. And then approximately 372,000 postgrad work permits were issued in 2021 alone. So you guys can do the math, right? So do they, you know, are they going to need to create a new program? Well, yes, they are. And you can see here, however, despite growing in size, the international student population has become less diverse over the past two decades with increased concentration in certain source countries, provinces of study and fields of study. So here's, this is important. Who, who, is the, who is driving the ship? India, by, by and large, has had the largest numbers that are coming in. And so they've, they're looking now at this. So IRCC is exploring strategies to diversify the source countries for Canada's international student program. So what does that mean? Well, it's not good news for any of the, the top source countries. And you can see as well as ways to incentivize students to look beyond major urban centers, move to Lethbridge, Alberta. <laughs> when choosing a program of study, come and come and study in at the University of Lethbridge or Lethbridge College and, and stay here and live here and live in Lethbridge like like Mark does. So it's important to note that the rapid growth of the program has led to concerns about student vulnerability and the overall integrity of the program. The department is working to maintain and strengthen program integrity where necessary with the goal of ensuring that students are protected from abuse. OK, this is something that I want to talk about. You know, there's nothing that breaks my heart more, you guys, than to hear of employers, Canadian employers, who were in, in league with crooked consultants and agents um, to sell job offers. And you know all about this. You guys, it's all around you. You pay an employer $30,000 or $40,000, they'll, they'll do a labor market impact assessment for you. Whoever's helping them do it will basically commit fraud and pretend like there's no Canadians who applied to the ads. They'll get an LMIA approved. And then you basically are paying for your own job. You're working for free so that they can document it and show the government that, that you are actually being paid when in reality, you're the ones who paid them under the table. Disgusting, horrible. And those are the kind of things that have really spoiled the program for us. So it, yeah, it just breaks my heart to see that. And there's a lot more in here that we could go through for sure. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Um, okay, Insu is saying share the link. Well, the link, let me see. I don't know if I can do it here. I think you should have been able to see the link if you scroll through all the, the chat. Um, but the link is, let me share this over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a text box. And I'm going to try to just, oops, let's see. Let me make sure I get this in the right spot here. This is the link, you guys. Oh, it's kind of small and it's not clickable, I know. So my apologies for that. But that there is the link right there to the document. I'm sure most of you will be able to find it. Where do you locate it? If we look here on the government site, Canada, Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, Corporate Information, Publications and Manuals, and then it's the Strategy to Expand Transition to PR. Okay, but we'll make sure that we get this uh, that we get this posted and it's attached to a link in the description once this video is released as a recording. OK, 
Okay, so there is that is the link. Okay, um, let's see what else we have here. I know you guys are are working like crazy. Um, you're very welcome, Armin. Let's see if there's any other comments as we work through this. Um, yes, international students. We've got lots of comments about that, which is definitely new, right? Because right now there is no permanent resident stream that is specifically targeted to international students. You guys are lumped in it with everybody else. And um, uh, yep. And yeah, as far as implementation, Eli addresses here as well, that the, the report um, that the express entry changes and C-19 implementation will likely happen in spring of 2023. And that's what the minister has said in the past, right? Um, so I wouldn't expect any significant changes right away. It's just, it's just not going to happen, right? Um, let's see. I think we've got most of things here. Um, yes, and people are saying, yes, nothing new, nothing concrete. Well, they talked about what they were going to do and what this document, when they table it, means this is on the books now. It's not just speculation, but it's reality. And so as you're going through all of these things, you guys, Understand that as we get more information, as we see more uh, more things being released, we will definitely talk about them. Um, I wonder if there's anything else in my last couple minutes here that I can share with you guys uh, from the report. Um, if is there any specific aspects that you guys want to talk about, just let me know. Um, uh, Bassem says seems like people with score of 470, 475 will have a really long journey to get PR. Well. We'll just have to wait. We'll just have to see. I think um, it depends on occupations and things like that. So, and Nick says, what has been the update really? That's a good question. So what do we have actually in here? What is the minister actually announced? What has he actually shared? And so when they put this together, it's kind of hard to imagine because if you look at this here, this is something that was always curious to me. So who was putting it forward? So Randeep Sarai, he's a liberal. Okay, our minister of immigration, is a liberal. <laughs> and so why would the liberal government need one of their own MPs to put forward a private member's bill, M44, to basically encourage the government to do things that they were already doing? Like, why? That's the question. Why, why, would, they, why would they do that? You know, how much is political? How much is, is just to, to try to, to, you know, to stall time, to, you know, to, to figure things out? But just really to push people off. And, um, and then, yeah, so let's, so Raj asks a good question. He says, please talk about the existing TR to PR processing. Well, the existing TR to PR processing can continue to process all the way through to 2023. So individuals who are not finalized this year, they have quotas in their levels planning for all the way to next year into 2023. So it's, it's definitely not an expedited process. But one thing I want to let you know, Raj, those who are in that limbo, you have options. You have the ability to extend your work permit. You have the ability knowing uh, that, that you have a pathway. There are so many people watching these videos that just don't, that have been you know, battling for years and years to just have that opportunity to get in. And that's why I was so heartbroken when so many people weren't able to get in. Uh, some of the videos that I've done in the past, you guys, are to address things that you guys can do now to get prepared. Um, you know, when, when these programs are rolled out, if you remember some of the bottlenecks were things like language testing, um, police clearance certificates, even getting your, your degrees or diplomas from school. Many people were not able to submit their applications to the TR to PR pathway because they didn't have those documents and there were too many people applying for them. So I guess the last little piece of information that I'll leave with you guys is that take a look at your situation. We know what has been requested in the past for documents. Make sure that yours are up to date. People ask, what about my police clearance certificate? What about my immigration medical? Well, if you remember within the context of the TR to PR pathway, there was still a lot of uncertainty about whether or not someone needed to get an updated medical. There still is confusion within express entry as to who needs an ex a medical and who doesn't. Well, the reality is everybody needs one, but whether or not they will waive the need to get a new one if you've been in Canada. So those are things that the, the, the department is toying with right now and they're experimenting with. But the one piece of advice I'll leave you with as I, as I sign off here and jump on my, my express entry and I apologize to, uh, to the members of the express entry right here, the, the, the course, and there is still time for you guys to join me over there if you're looking at express entry. I'm gonna jump on that right now. There's still time to register for it. Um, but um, I'm gonna be just a couple minutes late jumping over there because I wanted to do this, this live. 
Um, but ultimately, the most important thing for you guys to realize is that you need to get your documents up to date and keep them up to date as much as possible. If you've quit a job, then go back and make sure you have a reference letter from that job. Sometimes employers, like sometimes businesses shut down. And if you don't have that letter, then you're not going to be able to um, prove that work experience that you completed. Make sure that if you're in Canada that you have a T4, that you have um, your pay slips, all those kinds of things. Have them ready and available for any positions that you've left because I've seen a lot of people struggle and miss out on their opportunity because they didn't have those things. If you're not planning to go back to your country, get an updated police clearance certificate. As long as you haven't gone back and you obtained it after you left, it's still valid. So those are some of the things and I hope this was helpful. I know that the desire just every bit as much as you, you know, what I'm sharing here is right off the cuff. So I opened it up, looked at it for the first time, just like you guys do. And I'll definitely go through and read it with a fine tooth comb and, and kind of have a little bit of a debrief that I'll probably release tomorrow. Um, but at this stage, at this, at this stage, it is, um, I have to uh, agree with Melody there. Uh, they're just beating a dead horse, really. Well, when it comes to the announcements with no substance, I agree. It's like, you know, all of the announcements that they've made have been designed to try to get you guys to get off their backs. <laughs> and the reality is, if I were you, I wouldn't because there were promises made to you, whether it was the original education agent that talked you into coming and study in Canada, the school that said, hey, guaranteed PR if you come and study or whatever representative that was, you know, telling you that you've got a ton of opportunities to um, immigrate, just come study and everything will be bliss, right? You were probably told that. You were sold that. Now I want to see it become a reality. So let's see, Minister. Our dear Minister here, he, uh, he, he has made this um, post. We've got it now finally released. The technical glitch has been overcome. Thank you very much, uh, MP Sarai's office. And uh, now it just comes down to what Minister Fraser is going to do. All right. So there we have it. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm going to jump over to my live, uh, my master class for Express Entry. And uh, I'll see all of you guys probably tomorrow when I've had a chance to actually review the document. Um, we'll make sure that the link is up, but I'm sure a lot of you have already been able to see it. Thank you so much. Those of you who are over on Facebook who, um, uh, who posted that link, I really, really appreciate that. You were a huge, huge part of this. So thank you so much. And I'll make sure that I try to get this link put into the description or at least into the, the comments because I think I can post a link. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. And I wish you guys all the best. Hopefully we'll get more details about this international student program in short order. Take care.